you think that says start recording? I'm not exactly sure what it says. I can almost see my keyboard. And as for delay, well, let's have a look. I've been playing with uh, Next Cam and experimenting with the amount of actual delay we have when using it. And really, there isn't a great deal depending on how you have your settings set up. If there's any at all. Now, this camera is junk. This is an on USB 2.0 web camera. Look, it even says it right here. Hold on. It's right in the information. Sun Plus IT Incorporated USB 2.0 camera. Well, it's I bought it in a box that said it was an on uh, device. So we have that. It can go up to a resolution of 2592 by 1944. And I've got decoding set to uh, decoding accuracy set to low fast and using the built-in decoder. You can also switch to a dynamic decoder or the system decoder. But I kind of wanted to see how it would go. It defaults to high slow, which also seems fine to me, actually. Um, I have the aspect ratio set to automatic. Um, and then 25, so we're, we're going to go all the way up to the full resolution here which is uh, one feature that came with this camera is an autofocus some little tiny AI apparently that tries to see your face and it, it doesn't see my computers quite well enough to to really be productive here and this is at the highest resolution on this junky camera I would not um, use this camera really as the basis for determining how well this works and what kind of latency we're looking at. Try to, oh, my hands hide back there. What a weird view. So I don't know, you can see both sets of my hands, right? The delay is minimal. We got a little bit of blur because this camera only does 30 frames a second at this resolution, and there's no like um, reprojection going on with this software. I'm assuming it doesn't feel like it, doesn't look like it, but it's not too bad. And I actually can read the the keys on my keyboard when my, when this camera doesn't go out of focus. Need an infinite focus set. I should be able to lock it. Um, I can see my phone screen to some extent too, which is kind of handy if you turn the light, the brightness down. I assume the same probably could be true of the uh, desktop monitors as well. I, I suppose if I tweaked the brightness a little bit, I might get a little bit clearer visual through this camera. But again, this camera is just kind of clunky. Uh, what I was getting at, however, was the fact that. I'm pretty much using this color pass through to, to navigate and it's it is not 3D it is a 2D camera so I mean it is flat and if I want to pick something up I, I probably have to think about it a little bit more than than with the 3D pass through but you have a crispy color pass through if you need to look at something real quick you know get something done hit the record button on your PC you know it's possible from right here and kind of convenient and if you've got your on uh, Android TV box which is actually an awesome on product if you're wearing that if that's connected to your headset you can switch from camera to to the to your TV back and forth real quick whenever you need to no big deal right I don't have it connected right now because this shiesty 2.0 Walmart brand camera is just not great and it, it seemed to be causing problems running two devices on this hub um, otherwise though it's, it's pretty spectacular this is pretty fantastic and I, I really feel like the delay is super minimalistic and if we had an app that had locked 
a USB camera's view for you, it, I just think it would go a long way. Especially if you, when you've got a good camera. Like, like, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to just kind of glance down here and see the keys on my keyboard or, or look up here. I can adjust this a little bit here. Look up here real quick and, you know, see what's going on on my monitors. Like, that should be basic and easy to do. And hell, I think Meta should support it, really. Uh, you know, we, sh we should try to use these things to the fullest extent possible. Uh, Mark keeps saying that he wants this thing to be like the laptop that goes on your face. Well, this is a whole lot closer to a laptop that goes on your face. Okay, because, yeah, this is pretty cool. I can bring up my screen there, and we'll, we'll just pop the camera over here. Over here. Oh. Oh, because I have TeamViewer in the middle. You know, and there's my real phone. So if I need to make, like, actually, you know, um, deal with the world out there on my phone, I'm capable of doing that from right here, from this point right here. I can look real quick through the pass-through camera at my phone if I need to, determine whether or not there's a notification I actually care about. All right, I guess I've got to get it kind of close to really determine if there's a notification I care about but it's there and again I, I blame so much of the visual fidelity here on this camera and in a little bit I'll, I'll, I'll plug the um the Android TV box back in and we'll have a look at some videos uh, with that and and see just what what the difference is really but again, if we could just get a headlock, like if you could just headlock a, a 2D app or all the 2D apps, that'd be kind of great sometimes. Like, can't I just headlock the center app? You know, there should be like a quick trigger button down here. Boom. All right, headlocked. You know, I, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe there isn't a good use case for this. I, I, I feel like there is. I, I feel like even just being able to go over here and see that my mouse is running across my screens. Okay, well, I lost it. Yeah, anyways, yeah, I, I can kind of see my mouse running across my screens. <laughs> uh, I am running it across two different computers, too, so... There's that part. There's my mouse right there. See, no problem. And I can hit that record button or hit the pause button real quick you know in part because I know where they are but it is possible it's possible to do it real quick flip back to whatever else you were doing you know and have a high resolution color visual without lifting the headset up without having to, to go through extra steps take it off and put it on on a stand or or on the charger it you know or set it on some precarious bench or other where your cats might just you know get at it and again how much how much delay are we really seeing here really I feel like that's quite fast I feel like that's right there with what I'm doing you know I, I could be wrong That is pretty good. And that's only at 30 frames a second. So if we've got 60 frames a second, we could get up to a 4K display with some maybe brightness controls and stuff, something like that. That'd be great. But, I mean, just being able to see the real world around you real quick and then flip back to whatever else you were doing, easy peasy, you know, highly, highly convenient in my opinion. Well, after numerous, after numerous attempts today to connect two USB devices to the Quest 2 um, and be able to switch back and forth, I found that at this time um, there's an issue with sound delivery when you have two cameras plugged in. Sometimes the sound works and sometimes the sound crashes. Also, Sometimes if you unplug a camera or it gets jangled around and 
unplugs itself a bit and then plugs back in. A second occurrence of the next app tries to open on top of the first one and it can't open either of the cameras because the, the, the first occurrence is trying to use it. Uh, I was able to get into the Android sub settings for the Quest 2 headset and turn and force stop the app and that at least let me get my images back but when you have two devices plugged in at present using next cam on v47 of the quest updates what you end up with is serious sound problems and sometimes stuttering video on one device or the other so my recommendation would be at this time to not connect more than one USB video capture device, whether that be a camera or a video capture card, into the headset. Um, if you want more than one source, you can always plug an HDMI switch in uh, before the capture card, and then you can switch between HDMI devices that way too. I'm looking to soon try to pick up a wireless HDMI dongle, a very small lightweight unit that I would like to plug into the capture card and then be able to broadcast HDMI quality video straight to the headset wirelessly. We'll go back to wireless again a little bit, huh? Yeah, that might be kind of cool. All right, guys, you have a great day, and I will see you all later. <laughs> All right, so just like I was saying, guys, um, interestingly, my cats knocked the headset off my little workspace here, and now I've got audio pass through with both USB devices for no reason that I can, well, at least through the on TV. Definitely got audio coming through the on TV don't know why I've got it now but it's it, it was just there and yes we still have the other camera which now looks a little bit rant at the moment some of this might be too because I'm, I'm trying to display to the uh, computer at the same time. Now look, we, we dropped down to 960 <clears throat> and we're back in in gold here. Look at that kitty. Okay, I gotta admit, having a pass through like this where I can see all the way around me is kind of a trip. It's kind of neat. Uh, let's go back over here to the capture device and, and the audio is there. That's very, very interesting. Don't know why the audio is there, but it's definitely there, huh? I don't know how well you guys can hear that, but it's pretty brilliant. It's actually a little bit loud for me. And wherever my phone is sitting, uh, it's playing audio in the background as well on me. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not super impressed with the performance when running two... USB devices, I think I still don't recommend doing it um, at this time. Maybe after some updates and optimizations. Maybe if we can get the developer of Next Camera to do some opti optimizations for uh, the Quest 2 headset. It would be cool if it was like a 2D app version and maybe also a, a full version that, that created like a a pass-through environment with a partial color view you know even if that view was a 2d flat screen part portion you could with a with a full VR uh, app you could scale your view to be in line with your hands and fingers and, and, and fit you even if it was 2d even if it went flat in spots I think I think that still could be all right. As a matter of fact, I think we could probably uh, use a little AI magic to make the 2D appear 3D to us, which I am pretty sure is what they do 
right here what Meta does with their software. One more time, guys. You have a great day. Happy holidays. I hope everybody's having a blessed, blessed time. Please go ahead and experiment yourselves. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.